before we actually apply the filters let's add the pagination and then we will do the filters because pagination is also sort of filtering so in our components folder i'm going to create a new component for pagination links and i will call it the same pagination links and we will have our script and template so if I open the console once again, and I still have that console.log, you remember we had our data and also our links. So this is what we are going to use. We are going to loop over this links array, which contains objects, and each object is representing a page. And we have some values here, like active, label, and the URL. So we are going to loop over this array and use all these properties to show these links on the page. So first, let's define our props so we can use that links. And we can just use the define props macro. And I'm going to call it a paginator. And it's going to be of type object. Now, on this div, let's add some classes. Let's say flex, justify between, and items start. But before I continue, I want to mention we've already done this in another series. And if you want the code, which is going to be very similar to what we are doing now, it is in this GitHub link, which is in the description. And we are going to do something similar, but instead of copy pasting, I want to type this so we can go over it and see what's going on. But for the classes, because it's just CSS, I'm going to copy paste it. All right, so we have an outer div, and then we have another div within that with some other classes, and then another div, which is going to be each element. So we want to use the V4 on this third div. So we can say for each link in our paginator.links. This is technically going to be our listings.links, but I'm calling it paginator, so it's generic and we can use it elsewhere. Now for the key attribute or prop, I can use the index of each element. So instead of just grabbing the link, I can wrap this with parentheses and grab the index and just pass it down here. So now for each link, we want to generate an element and it's not going to be just one element. So let me show you one more time in the console what's going on. So in the links, we have these elements, right? And they have this active property that is set to true if that page exists, but it is set to false if it doesn't. So I want to use this. So I want to use this property and render a span, for example, if there is no page, because there is no point to render a link element if there is no URL. And for that, we can use the component element, which is a special component in Vue.js. So through this element, we can say, what is this component? So if I say is a span, then it's going to render a span. If I say it's a link with a capital L, then it's going to render a link. But I want to make this dynamic so I can bind this and say, if our link.url is true, so that means this one, then we will render a link element. So this is the link element from inertia view. And if it's not, so if it is a null, like this instance, we will render a span. So that is our first prop or attribute for this component. So then we need an href if it's a link, and we will bind that to link.url. Then we need a label, so I will use vhtml, and we will bind this to link.label. So again, it's coming from here. And I'm using vhtml because you notice we have an HTML symbol here. So this will be two arrows to the left, I believe, and the text previous. So that is for the vhtml. Then I'm going to add some classes here, which I will just paste it. So we just have some border left and right. We have the set of width and height. We set the display to grid and some background and so on. All right, so that's it for now. And we will come back to it in a moment. But let's import it in our home component to see what we have. So again, I'm going to duplicate that import line and change this to pagination links like this. And inside this VF block, we want to render the pagination. So after this grid, we can have another div. Let's set some margin top to eight and use our pagination links that is looking for a paginator prop. And in this case, we just want to pass down our listings. So the prop that we have up here, and we don't have to say listings that links because we are doing that in our component. Okay, let's see how this looks. And there we have it. So you notice we have these arrows and then the text. And to me, this is not the best design. I would like to change this and I will in a moment, but I still want to change a few things. If we go to page one, 
you notice up here in the URL, we have page one. And if we go back to the pagination links and hover over the previous button, you notice we don't see the pointer because this is not a link. And in fact, let's inspect our site. You notice it says span. And of course we can press next because there is a next page. And if we go to page four, because there is no next page, now this one is a span. But I also want to add an indication here that says which page are we on. And at the moment we don't see anything that says we are on page four. Again, if we take a look at these objects, you remember we had an active property that we can use. So let's go back to our pagination links component and we want to add some dynamic classes so we can bind the class to an object. And I want to add some hover effect only if it's a link. So this is an object, right? So we are adding a colon and we say, if the link URL is true. So this is the first dynamic class I want to add. Then I also want to mute the button or the text if there is no link. So for example, we can say text slate 300 and again use the colon and say if the link URL is false. So again, we are using the same property, but this time we are negating it and saying if it's false, then set the text to slate 300. And one last thing I want to add is to show which page we are on. So I will add font bold and some color for the text. Now we want to say apply these classes when the link is active. All right, so we have three conditional classes based on different conditions. And now if we go back to our website, you notice this number four is different. If we go to number two, of course, we can see that we are on page two and in the URL, we have the parameter. We also have other properties we can use to make this even better. So back to our pagination link, I'm going to paste some code here. So I have a P tag with some classes and for the text, I'm saying showing from to whatever the number of the total results. So if I save this going back, this is what we have here. So this is just another touch to show how many results we have. We have 20 and we are showing from seven to 12. And this is again, part of that paginator. So I'm calling the paginator from two and total properties. And these are all available on that paginator object. Anyway, the last thing I want to use here is the label for this next and previous. So for that, I have a function, which again, you can grab it from this link and I'm going to copy it. It's just some simple JavaScript and paste it here. So I'm calling this function make label, which will take a label as a parameter and it checks if it includes the word previous, then it will change it to two arrows to the left. If it includes the text and next, it will return the other way. Otherwise, it will just return the label as it is. We just want to use this instead of hard coding this link label. Let's wrap this with parentheses and use our make label function here and save it. And now if we go back to our website, there we have it. I think it's a nicer look. Anyway, so we have our links here and they work properly. And now it's time to add the filters.